Well, the housing market in Canada is cooling off, but despite that, a new report says most cities will be less affordable in 2019. Now, the Royal Bank says higher interest rates will drive up the cost of carrying a mortgage. In fact, it says the cost of owning a home in the biggest city, Toronto, will hit 79% of median household income, and that's up from 76% in 2018. Now, in the most expensive city in the country, Vancouver, housing prices are expected to fall, but home ownership is still expected to remain at 88% of median income. To help us uh, understand and paint a picture here of what the real estate market will look like in 2019, we've invited two real estate agents from Toronto and Vancouver. Catherine Himmelfarb Borden is the branch manager at Forest Hill, Yorkville. She's in Toronto. Steve Soretsky is a realtor for Sutton West Coast and a real estate analyst, and he joins us in Vancouver. So hello to the two of you. Hi, Michael. Thanks uh, for having me on. Listen, Thank you. <laughs> very happy to have you on. So listen, as we said right off, Toronto, Vancouver, the most expensive markets in the country. And, and Steve, I want to begin here with you. What's the market like in the most expensive city in our country, Vancouver? Uh, I mean, it's definitely going through a shift right now uh, as the real estate board uh, numbers just came out uh, last week where, you know, 2018, we finished the year with the fewest home sales in 18 years. And as a result of that, I mean, it's not surprising that prices have started to decline across all segments. And if you look at it uh, from June, per the MLS benchmark, uh, condos declined uh, 6% since June. And detached homes declined 7%. So we're definitely on a much different uh, trajectory than we're used to. Different trajectory, price is going down. Catherine, what's it like in Toronto right now? Um, in Toronto, our condo market is through the roof. Prices are up, I think, 11.4%, which is incredible. Uh, there's a huge demand that is supported by our leasing market and our rental market. And although housing is down, I think about 8%. So it's not exactly reflecting what's going on in Vancouver right now. Um, although I think a lot of people think that we do follow Vancouver, I think in this way there may be some some differences. Mm -hmm. so, some differences, but uh, and correct me if I'm wrong here. Some in broad strokes, though, it seems to be in terms of home prices, they they are going down, but people seem to not be buying because of concerns of affordability. Uh, Catherine, why is that? Um, I think that people are sort of doing this wait and watch sort of thing where they're waiting to see what goes on in terms of interest rates and in the market. Um, there's definitely a paucity of listings. There's less listings on the market than ever before. So I think that buyers are feeling like I don't want to be pressured into buying something just because um, because interest rates may rise. So they're sort of just waiting and watching in the housing market. Whereas in the condo market, people are grabbing and sort of jumping at the condos and paying over asking. We have multiple offers, just like we did two and a half years ago before the Fair Housing Act. And uh, the condos are gone through the roof. And developers are still investing in our economy and developing new condos that you know, the highest per square foot rate than we've ever had. So, so, so almost a shift in what people are, are buying in Toronto. Yes. And Steve, what about Vancouver? Because the, as you said, the prices are going down in Vancouver as well. But it seems, again, people are hesitating because of affordability concerns. Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, you know, over the last couple of years, we've had a lot of, there was, I think, a fear of missing out where prices were rising, you know, a couple percent each month, whereas now we're starting to see the reverse where prices are declining almost on a monthly basis here. So I think there's a lot of people that are, are nervous about pulling the trigger. And, uh, you know, speaking with a lot of my clients is that, well, hey, you know, our price is going to move lower. Maybe I should wait till the spring. Uh, so they're sort of riding that out right now. Is that what you're hearing from potential buyers? Is it a hesitation? Do they feel that they can actually jump in if there's a bit more uh, of steady ground? Because, you know, if you look at the RBC report, they're still saying that ownership is expected to remain at 88% of median income. That's a fairly high number. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I think that uh, you know, I might take the flip side on that. I think that you know, the conservative approach of a two and a half percent decline might be might be a little bit too conservative on that front. And then, I mean, from an interest rate perspective, we've seen the Canada five-year bond, which is historically correlated with the five-year fixed rate, uh, you know, went from about two and a half percent in November, plunging down to you know, one point eight percent just last week. So, I think if anything, you could actually see. Uh, rates come down and not go up. So that might actually be incentive to actually get into the market. Yeah, I think it's a possibility. So I just think I think you'll see some some better affordability here in Vancouver specifically. I mean, I can't speak for Toronto, but mm -hmm. but you know, and affordability is of course an issue for those who want to buy into the market. But Catherine, I wonder about sellers. Are they feeling any frustration right now? Because it seems to be that uh, houses in Toronto uh, and in the greater Toronto area, we're talking all the way to Hamilton, all the way up to Simcoe and beyond when you go east, 
Um, it yeah. seems it seems it seems that sellers are frustrated because houses and properties are sitting on the market longer than they were. Well, that's a part of the problem is that these our sellers all have this mindset left over from mid 2017 where the prices were through the roof and people were multiple offers bids were were commonplace and so I think a lot of sellers are wondering how their house next door sold for 2 million dollars and theirs is only worth a million 3 now when it's not nearly as good and their neighbor had a two car they have a two car garage and their neighbor didn't so they're trying to make sense of it um, so they're not lowering their prices as much as maybe they should at any given time. They're sort of waiting it out, hoping their buyer's going to come along, where the buyers are very savvy, and a lot of them are already in the market. I mean, buyers who are buying luxury properties are usually in the market already, so they can afford to wait. They, it doesn't matter to them. Whereas I think new buyers, and this is like first-time homeowners, still have that sort of anxiety that they have to get into the market. And most of them come in in the condo market. And because Toronto has such a strong pre-construction market, a lot of people come in in pre-construction. So they can put down 20% over two or three years and sort of accrue their capital until they can you know, afford a mortgage, maybe three or four years down the road. OK, so let's do this quickly then, because I've got a couple of minutes here. But yeah. I want to get advice from both of you. And, and Catherine, I'll let you finish off your note, because I want to begin. What's your advice quickly to sellers? So my advice to sellers is sellers in the condo market, if you're in the condo market and you're considering making a move and buying a house, now there's probably no better time now than now. And I tell my own son this, he owns a condo, and I tell him that he should be looking at houses now if he can afford it. So if you can get together the down payment and, and buy a house now, you should be selling your condo. Prices are way up, and the houses are down. It makes sense. Um, first time owners, I always think it's a good idea if you can get together the money to put down a down payment. You're better off buying than you are buying something small than, than leasing. I mean, our lease, our prices are crazy here. Our rents are two to three thousand dollars for one or two bedrooms. If you can get together the down payment, that will happily carry a mortgage and your maintenance fees and your taxes um, easily. So I would say, if you can buy, definitely buy. Do not be frightened off by the future or whatever people are sort of saying. Um, interest rates are still relatively low. Mm -hmm. I think anybody would tell you that. Let me jump in because Steve, I want to give you time too. What's, what's your advice to sellers and buyers right now, in particular in the GVRD? I think for sellers, it's just getting up uh, ahead of the market actually. It's uh, pricing uh, future price deceleration into that picture. Uh, so because right now there's very few sales. If you actually want to move your property, what's happening is you get these sellers that are essentially chasing down the market. They're just consistently one step behind where their price needs to be. Uh, and so I think you know you want to get ahead of that trend and actually set the market price. Uh, and then I think from a buyer's perspective, I think you know the buyers are in the driver's seat. So take your time, find something that you like that you want to live in for the next couple of years. I mean, it's likely there's going to be some price volatility. So find a place you like and 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 negotiate a good price on it.